Hey there viewers, welcome back to the channel. We're going to be starting another big project today. Uh, vehicle is a 2013 Ford Taurus and the complaint is a coolant leak. Um, upon investigation, said coolant leak appears to be coming from behind the alternator and uh, taking a closer look, it's coming out of the weep hole for the water pump. Um, those of you that do not know, this 3.5 engine and its water pump, um, the water pump's timing chain driven. So in order to replace the water pump, you got to remove the timing chains. So that's where we're at. We're going to start ripping and tearing on this thing, and I'm going to show you how I do these. Hope you enjoy. When I start tackling a heavily involved job like this, you know, in this case, we're actually removing the powertrain from the vehicle to uh, perform this service. I like to just start getting rid of all of the things in the engine compartment that just take up a lot of room. In this case, I'm currently working on the intake. Uh, getting the intake out of there is going to give us access to a lot of different coolant hoses, a lot of different harnesses, and really, it's just the best way to start big projects. Just get as much out of the way as you possibly can to give you access to things. Here we're starting work on the battery. Um, very, very simple to get things like this off of here. You'll notice as I go along, I try and put back fasteners back where I took them from, just so I don't have to keep track of them. Um, you know, whatever you took a fastener off of is a great place to store said fastener, that way you don't have a pile of bolts. Now the battery's out of the way, I'm gonna go ahead and get the rest of the air box out. Uh, removing the lid first tends to make it easier. Then you've got some eight millimeter bolts up towards the top that to kind of hold this thing down. The rest of it's grommeted into place. Once you get those bolts out of the way, you can kind of just snap it right up. Next thing I'm getting out of here is the battery tray. With that out of the way, we can access the transmission mount. A couple small little clips and a couple bolts up towards the bottom of that. There's a few harnesses directly beneath the battery tray that you need to disconnect following that. They're already disconnected in this case, I'm just getting them tied out of the way. I'm going to start working on the passenger side of the vehicle now. I'm getting the actual EVAP line disconnected, it goes through the purge solenoid. I'm also getting the fuel line disconnected. I was kind of folding those back to the engine so they're tucked out, out of the way. What I'm doing here is I'm starting to remove the cowl, and you may ask, why is that? Well, when, I'm, when I pull this powertrain, I'm pulling the entire wiring harness with it, and the engine computer is up underneath this cowl. Uh, for the most part, this thing's held on with the plastic fasteners you see towards the front. I'm just working on kind of unscrewing those. Uh, what I just disconnected there was the actual washer fluid feed to the nozzles. Come around the other side, doing the same thing, just getting rid of these plastic fasteners. Then we start working on the wiper arms. Now in my case, these wiper arms were super stuck on here, um, so I, I have to use a press to actually get these things off. Uh, maybe you'll have better luck. 
maybe not, but definitely a good tool to have in your arsenal just in case. You definitely don't want to go after these with a hammer or something like that. I mean, you can risk damaging the windshield. I've seen, I've seen guys do it over and over. They'll try hitting all these things with a hammer and they'll crack the windshield like nothing. With wipe arms out of the way, you can just sort of lift this thing up. You don't need to remove it completely. I'm just getting it up high enough to where I can access the engine computer. Just using this mini bungee cord to do that. These things are great for tying stuff out of the way. This lower panel, there's a couple push, a couple push pins that seat down into the body of the car. You just gotta kind of pop those up and get them out. With that cowl out of the way, we can work on disconnecting the engine computer. Uh, the only connectors you really need to disconnect are the two on your right. Uh, the one on the left is actually going to stay in the vehicle. Um, I didn't realize that until I had all the harnesses disconnected. There's another bulkhead connector kind of underneath that harness. You can see I just disconnected it there. Once you get those out of the way, they're kind of in a slip joint sort of thing. You can see I'm going to unclip that from the body. That'll just lift straight out, and then you gotta work on sort of fishing this thing underneath that uh, a little cross brace there. And I'm just gonna fish that through, and I'm gonna tie that to the engine up out of the way too. There's a main coolant line that goes from the degas bottle uh, to a pipe that goes underneath the intakes. I'm just working on getting that disconnected. Next, I'm going to start working on some of the radiator hoses. Uh, this is a pretty good design engine, I have to admit. The upper and lower rad hoses are right here beside each other. I mean, talk about easy access. Uh, I think when Ford designed this engine, they really had serviceability in mind because, I mean, really, this thing just this thing just absolutely melts apart. There is nothing hard at all about getting this powertrain out. Now, one thing to note is you're probably going to want to drain the cooling system first. I didn't hear just because it was really low on coolant to begin with. Um, you can see nothing really comes out when I disconnect this hose. Towards the rear of that fitting we were working on, you need to disconnect the two heater hoses. They're a little aggravating to get to, but nothing too difficult. I would have normally started off with this, but our AC machine was tied up with another technician, so I'm going to go ahead and reclaim the air conditioning. Your best bet is to do this first so you can start working on other things while that's doing it, but unfortunately, with our machine being tied up at the moment, I just didn't have any way of doing that, so we're doing it now.
So with the AC nice and reclaimed, we're gonna start doing some under vehicle work. In this case, we need to get all the suspension components disconnected in order for us to drop the subframe. So basically what that involves is removing the wheel, disconnecting the knuckle from the strut, uh, disconnecting the sway bar link, uh, and then the wheel speed harness. In this case, I'm working on disconnecting the caliper. Uh, these slide pins are 17 millimeters, they're pretty beefy. Always secure your caliper in some sort of way. Just don't let it hang on the brake line. That's one of my pet peeves. I can't stand when I see people doing that. Next, I'm going to get the wheel speed sensor. 8 millimeter bolt. Comes out nice and easy in that aluminum knuckle. And that harness is secured to the strut. So after you remove that sensor from the knuckle itself, you're going to need to disconnect that harness from the strut assembly. After the harness is all disconnected, you start working on the strut itself. Big fasteners, 24 millimeter, and in my case, they were in there pretty tight. Now, these through bolts are splined, so you're going to need to pound them out. Um, your best bet here is with an air hammer. Just make sure you put the nut on the bolts. So you don't risk damaging the threads when you do this. Now, I was hoping this nut would come off of this joint, but unfortunately it didn't, and that's often going to be the case when you're dealing with sway bar links. Uh, fortunately for us, Ford was smart, and they gave you a 10 millimeter hex on the end of that bolt. So what you can do is just put your impact on tighten, hold the nut with a wrench, and you can tighten that bolt to get the sway bar link through the nut. Very good thinking from our engineers over at Ford Motor Company. Now you don't truly need to disconnect the axle nut, um, but there's a reason that I'm doing it that I'll get into after we actually have the powertrain out of this vehicle. The most important thing is you want to make sure that it's separated from the splines of the wheel bearing. You want to make sure that that, uh, that outer joint can move freely in and out. Still too tight. While I'm waiting for this to finish up, it's almost done. You know, there's a few small things underneath the vehicle we gotta take care of. One of them is the intermediate shaft bolt there. The other is disconnecting the front drive shaft. We don't need to pull it off of anything other than that flange. Uh, just four bolts, we can take those loose. Uh, the other big thing is the exhaust system. Uh, there's kind of two ways to go about it. You got this wide pipe assembly, two nuts there, two nuts there. And you can go about it one of two ways. You could, one, 
trying to fight with this press fit coupling here, which I ain't about that. Um, look at the rust on that thing. I'm, I'm just not doing it. The easiest thing to do, in my opinion, on these is just to drop the whole exhaust system. Just a couple of rubber hangers. I'm, I mean, that's, that's really nothing to it. So other than those small things, I mean, this engine's basically ready to come out of here. So let's get everything underneath wrapped up. When I first looked at these two, I knew that this wasn't going to go well. Uh, these are normally 15 millimeter nuts, and I mean, they're rusted down to maybe a 13 and a half. Looks like someone tried taking them out before, so no option but to cut them off. chaser around those studs and these things will be good as new. Still, nowhere near as good as Erico. It would have been perfect if people were doing it. Now you're going to have trouble with this part if you did not leave the vehicle in neutral when you put it on the hoist or put it on jack stands or you know whatever it is you did. Um, this drive shaft will not turn with the vehicle in park. So it's very important before you disconnect the battery to make sure this thing's in neutral. Um, even if you forget, you know, you can always put it in neutral from the transmission, but don't lift the car up until you, until you put it in neutral. Otherwise, you're going to be letting it back down. Um, another thing to note is to make sure you mark this drive shaft so it stays indexed. We're at the point now where we're pretty much ready to drop this assembly out of here. Um, just a few small things left. So what I'm currently working on is just positioning these jack stands in a manner to support the subframe. Um, and you're also going to need to support the transmission and the engine as well. So at least in my experience, you're going to need a total of six. Uh, support points. Uh, four on the subframe, one on the engine, one on the transmission. That, that's what seems to work best for me. Once you get all these set, you're going to need to actually lower the subframe onto them until they make good contact. Just a few small things left. Um, I have not disconnected these AC lines yet, uh, basically just because you know I was pretty late in reclaiming the air conditioning. So the best place to disconnect them is one at the condenser here. It's very accessible, easy to get to. Just you know, one nut you got to whiz off, and then the uh, AC pressure sensor.
you just kind of want to fold this line up out of the way so it doesn't get snagged on anything when we lift the chassis up. The other easy place to disconnect is right here. Uh, pretty much a no-brainer. Just get this off of here, get the line tied to the engine. So nearing the pivotal moment, uh, what I'm currently working on here is the engine mount on the driver's side. Um, what I eventually ended up doing is I ended up removing this whole mount just because I felt that it would make it easier to reassemble this thing. So in this case, I'm just disconnecting these uh, four nuts. There's two other bolts that go down. Uh, you might be better off disconnecting those two and just pulling that whole mount out of there. Now we're on the driver's side of the vehicle working on the transmission mount. Uh, same deal over here, just four fasteners. Once the engine and transmission have been disconnected, you're going to want to go underneath the vehicle and disconnect or uh, unfasten all of the subframe to chassis bolts. So at this point here, everything's been disconnected. We're ready to lift the chassis off of the powertrain. Uh, I've got an assistant. He's actually working the lift for me, lifting this chassis up. And uh, while you do this, if you do do it this way, you're going to want to keep a close eye on everything. Make sure nothing's getting snagged up. Make sure nothing's hitting anywhere. You know, the last thing you want to do is damage anything. So as he's working this lift, I'm just keeping an eye out, making sure everything's running smoothly. So as he's going up with this, you know, if you see anything at all that looks like it's going to be snagged, you know, you need to communicate well with your partner, whoever's working the lift for you. Uh, you also need to make sure that you're working your way around the vehicle. Don't stay in one spot. Um, you can very easily miss a harness or a ground that you missed, uh, some line that you didn't disconnect. Any little thing is going to cause huge problems if it's not disconnected. So you want to make sure you have a close eye on everything as you actually lift this vehicle up. I can give you to get the powertrain out of these vehicles. So let's talk about it. Once you get the powertrain out, you're going to be looking at something like this. As you can see, basically everything is still on the engine. Uh, these things come out relatively easy. Uh, some things I didn't show coming out were disconnecting these two transmission cooler lines. They're right there. You are going to need the special four disconnect tool for that. Uh, I think I also missed pulling the intermediate shaft off. Uh, no big deal. Um, everything else, we got that on camera. The reason I disconnected the axle nuts, because you don't have to, but the reason I did is because with this knuckle hanging down like this, I didn't want to risk it pulling that uh, joint out. Same thing over here. You can see how this thing's folded out. You can easily pop that joint out of its socket. You don't disconnect the axle nuts, so just personal preference there. Um, another thing to mention is this thing doesn't really have any front or rear mounts. So as you can see, this whole assembly, it'll teeter-totter back and forth. Now when you go to set whatever implement you, you're using to uh, set this powertrain on, you know, here I'm using five jack stands and a little bottle jack. You want to support the transmission and engine in a way that it's pretty much straight up and down. Um, if you do not do that, you're going to catch a lot of hell when you go to put this thing back in. Things just aren't going to line up right. Um, 
not too big of a deal. I mean, you can always adjust it. It's just you want to try to leave this thing as close to the position that it came out. Um, that way, when you're going back in, everything lines up a lot easier. You're not having to fight with it and pry on stuff and all that nonsense. But basically, our next step at this point is to start tearing this engine down. Valve cover's got to come off, intake's got to come off, and then obviously, the reason we're here, we're going to get this timing cover off so we can access the chains and the water pump.